Now we're back to Fog Wrestling. We're here to bring you ranking every match from Unforgiven 2001. Eight matches on this card. Where were we? We were in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Kurt, Kurt Angle's, Angle's hometown. hometown. Will he win the title tonight? We'll Probably. Find out. Aye. Um, no, I'm coming in at number eight. Now speaking of Unforgiven, uh, hopefully the, the legend can forgive me. Taker just recently retired, but his last, I think his last two pay per few matches have been pretty short of pish if I'm being honest yes um, the, the, the previous match against no but know what it is right the, the, if they just didn't bury the two teams although I think this match had the, there's no hope there's no story it's just two guys Stevie Richards debuted it with well to be fair Chronic got a lot more offence in than DDP and Canyon and they really shouldn't have because those two are actually built which made fucking uh, built up zero sense to me like you know what I mean like you, the, the, you fucking double champion Canyon who bet who better than Canyon and you the fucking f former WCW world champion DDP but uh, they get jobbed out yet two fucking bums Brian Clark and Brian Adams I mean fucking name me someone with a good name and when the debut I actually thought it was Brian Adams not the singer not, not, not like, Brian Adams Brian Adams name me someone the, the, I know they came out debut at like it's fucking 99 Hardy Boys and the attire didn't look that bad, but they fucking changed it up and it just looked absolute dog shit. They changed it to like the Eliminators. Like, or the Pitbulls. Name me remember. somebody good. Name me a wrestler with a good name, Brian. You just look at Daniel Bryan, the guy's pish. I know. So, you know what I mean? So I'm pish. putting this match last. Did nothing. It I mean, was it was basically 10 minutes of chronic dominating and then Undertaker, like, Undertaker was getting double teamed. This is literally what happened. Chronic dominated for ten minutes. Undertaker was getting double teamed. Um, he managed to fight them off. Came with a flying clothesline onto one of the Bryans, and then Taker chokes on the other Bryan, and that was it. That was fucking it. And we haven't seen the guy since. So I'm assuming that you never see them again because I don't remember. They get brought in as a big threat. Yeah, I mean, he pushes, up, he pushes over Undertaker's bike just to fucking I get buried. I, I never, I never remember seeing them in the first place. Never mind seeing them again. So uh, I don't know. Chronic. Pish. What was that? Pish. Chronic disaster. Moving on. Chronic the disease. Fuck's sake. Fuck it. Yes. Chronic illness. Right. Yes. We get the fucking point. The pish. This right. match was chronic. Right. Moving on. U.S. title. Rhino, Ty, Jury. This, um, this prick actually had this last and then I had to step in. Yeah, he had to feet on my uh, foot or whatever. Like, this wasn't bad, but let's be real. I mean, there's no real build up here. And this was pretty much, this was just a, a stop filler between the the the, uh, the two world title matches because they don't, I mean, people don't really like to see title matches back to back. So normally, this isn't the second last match. It was on the card, but you know. This just, is... Mate, this is your it's last like, chance to go to the toilet. Aye, or grab some popcorn or fall asleep or something. Or no, I mean, the match wasn't that bad. We're not no, it was alright. Rhino, though, gore. I, I mean, Rhino fucking almost killed Tajiri with the gore. And he became the new United States Championship. I, I didn't agree with the decision to take the belt off Canyon. Who better than Canyon? I don't eh? mind Rhino with it, though. I don't mind The Rhino belt was too big for Tajiri, not as in he didn't deserve it. It's actually see, too yeah. big. <laughs> Um, but there you go I mean it was alright for what it was and uh, Rhino wins relatively in like what four minutes or something so not bad no, we're not really melts so we ain't gonna fucking you I know. think it's a fuck man it was fuck five stars in, me, in my opinion up next we have Perry Sarton versus Raven Moppy. with uh, Perry Reynolds basically Perry Sarton trying to get some revenge for Moppy uh, Raven killed her last week fed her to a fucking wood chipper disposal thing. thingy longer than it really should have yeah but, I mean it, it, see to be honest the machine malfunctioned and Perry Sarton probably had enough time to run backstage and stop the attack but could he, argue it made it more agonising he did aye so uh, Sarton comes out for revenge tonight and he got it in a pretty decent match to be fair and um, I think it would just help this match as there was actually a storyline it's weird that job two jobbers can get a storyline over a mop and yet you can't today the main event guys can't even get fucking going. Yeah. mental but anyway Perry Sarton wins decent match it was pretty quick as well similar to the Tajiri uh, Rhino match who knows maybe if it was longer it could have been a wee bit higher rated on this list I think I think they could have used Raven more in the invasion yeah I mean Raven big time player on ECW 
didn't have the worst WCW career yet. He's been treated he just debuted it for me, brother. He's been treated pretty much as a fucking jobber here. Um, I un- no no I, I'll go- I understand why they're burying Taz. The guy's just too small. Yeah, but nah, that's that's I, that's the fucking truth. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> he is. He's too small. I'm he I'm not I'm not against midgets, right? But he's too small. And that's I mean, it. I mean, Tajiri's great when he's backstage with William Regal and that. But see when you stick him in the ring against a a fucking formidable opponent, like the guy's just too no, small. I don't even know what it. Tajiri like his attire, his legs. I mean, he's like red. Look, like his his legs look thick. I can buy him when he's kicking people. Taz, all the suplex. No, he just looks like a fucking midget. Like, you no, know, see, I, I'm not even taking the piss. See when Taz, like, locks on the Taz mission and he wraps his like, It looks like a child, like, jumping on their dad's back to, to be carried or something. It fucking does. It, it does. I'm not lying, like, it fucking does. And, uh, talking about kids um, jumping on their dad's back. We've got a four way tag S- match now. What Spike Dudley coming out dressed as fucking mini yeah. show. Brilliant. Um better than the big show scarred me for life seeing Spike Dudley in that attire uh, Hurricane Lance Storm also in this match the Hardys and the Dudleys for a four way elimination tag team match for the WWE tag team titles and it was the Dudley boys that retained in the end you beating the Hardys them and the Hardys did not really and, um, surprise, yeah. 15 minute match it was good it was pretty good you know I kind of enjoy elimination matches multiple man matches and uh, it was what it was is it the greatest match involved in the Dudley's nowadays? No, but it was it was interesting. It, it was pretty good. It was a good fast paced uh, match to kick off the show, which I think is pretty much what you want. To me, it should be. Ma- I think these are the kind of matches that should always kick off a show. I don't think you want to be kicking off the show with uh, like a a long fucking technical wrestling match. I know. Just my opinion. I know an elimination quick fire match. You know. Get, or or, or even some blood pumping up. or even something like the Perry Saturn fucking Raven thing. You know, I mean, something quick to the. Nah, I wouldn't kick a show off. No, I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. Nothing I, wrong with the match, but it's not what you kick a show off. As or. much as I don't, as much as I like seeing Angle fucking Benoit, I don't think a, an Angle Benoit twenty five minute match should be kicking off any show. No, I mean, well, that's uh, the bottom line on that one. Moving then though to match four, and we have got Edge versus Christian for the IC title. This was pretty good. I thought it could have been longer, but uh, it was about twelve minutes. You no, know the problem is, I mean, it's got the story, it's got everything about it, but it doesn't fit the agenda what they're going with. It's like the only inter-brand rivalry they've got, and they're both mid cars at this stage of the game. Yeah, something about this felt flat. Now I don't know if they're building towards a bigger match they between have a cage the match, don't they? I'm, I think so. But it's like the old cage they use, isn't it? I think so. Why is that? No idea. That's the only one I can get. So I don't know if, like, you know... Cause that, I mean, looking at this, this could have been the match of the night, like, looking at it. But I don't know, it just wasn't really there for me. Uh, Edge got a pretty nasty eye injury. Quite a few eye injuries for it. There the was. Christian had a burst at lift. not on. Perry Saturn had an eye injury. Austin had an eye injury. Did Rock have one? I don't know if Rock had one, but I think someone in the fam damn Jericho match also got. Ah, it was Jericho. I think Jericho had an eye injury, so. Weird that constant. A lot of fucking injuries tonight. Nowadays, watching fucking current wrestling gives you eye injuries. But, um, yeah, pretty much that's it. Christian beats Edge to win the Intercontinental Championship. Wait, Edge went to go for the concerto. Raph went, you're no doing it. Christian, low blow, roll up, good night. And that's it, Christian. It's the new IC Repeat. champion. Into the WCW the world title match, we have The Rock defeating Booker T and Shane McMahon. Uh, putting this match third in the list, better than the, the Booker T Rock match, in my opinion, at SummerSlam. Just with the ad at Shane McMahon in there, I think it created a wee bit more. I think Shane's one of the most underrated. I've never seen a Shane, boring Shane McMahon match. No, we always had some. Uh, we also had Test running, we had a big boot almost took Rock's heat every fucking big boot test does is pretty damn good to be fair and then Bradshaw ran in uh, tried to ch- uh, taste, uh, chase it test it um, we had the fucking Nick Patrick being fucking corrupt we had um, ah, who was his name WWF referee he ran in Al Hamner nope Mike Chioda yep Mike Chioda ran in and I was wondering in fact I could have got it because I knew other referees see, names <laughs> 
I was wondering why it was Mike Shield that was running in to fucking like tr you know call it the pissy uh, corrupt. What's his name again? Mick Thompson or what? What's the fucking WCW? Nick Patrick. Mick, Nick Patrick. Nick Patrick. Uh, uh, he so he calls him out and then he gets wiped out and then the Rock gets back, gets into the cover and nowhere. Bloody uh, El Hebner runs down and makes a quick count, and that is one. Uh, screw job one for El Hebner tonight. So it's been a while since he's done a screw job, 1997 to be precise. But tonight, he, he apparently screwed Booker T out of the title because uh, he wasn't the official match. And speaking of screw jobs, up next, Kurt Angle defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin. We we're rating this match number two, and Austin had his hand underneath the bottom rope when he tapped out, and El Hebner just either didn't see it or refused to see it. I'm sorry, Shane, I didn't see it. And uh, Angle won the match in 23 minutes. And in my opinion, nowhere near as good as the SummerSlam match. Well, I say nowhere near. So maybe that's a bit harsh. Like I'm making it sound. At least like the finish is a bit more. It's a bit. I'm making it sound as if the match was pish. <laughs> it wasn't pish, but I do, I do I do think it was like a step below a step below the uh, SummerSlam match. But still, this time Angle wins. Austin taps it, and um, yeah, thoughts. Nah, it was a good way to end the show, I guess. Angle's inbred family getting in the ring. We one black guy, one black kid. He just looked out of place. Everyone else was white. I don't know if he's adopted or what he has to be like, or he's just, or he, he want to make a wish trip for Africa. I don't know what it is. No, it was weird because not honestly, like I mean, everyone. No, we're white. not ripping the piss, but yeah, but we were, we were thinking, right? Okay, well, maybe someone in Angle's family is married into uh, you know a mix, uh, ethnic like. Ma marriage or whatever but there was no other black adult and obviously this black kid must have came from somewhere so okay. it, was just, it was just weird so but it'd be like be like midget Johnny Gargano rocking up in the Grove Street yeah they would just look out of fucking yeah, place and that's what this kid looked like maybe he sneaked into the I mean he's bigger than Taz but uh, well that doesn't say much like uh, Rock came down congratulated the angle and then uh, quickly quickly made the escape and then the rest of the WWF roster came out and uh, that was at that end of the show uh, but the match that we had the match of the night was the hardcore match for the WWF hardcore championship Rob Van Dam versus Chris Jericho break it down I, think, I mean let's be honest Rob Van Dam's always involved in good matches so since he's joined every match he's had has been pretty good I know. Uh, big ladder involved in this match uh, but I don't like ladders in normal matches that don't require ladders I, I just think I just think it's a bit awkward sometimes when they pull a ladder because the main primary object the, the main purpose no, of a ladder but is I like, think it makes sense you're allowed to use weapons and for me to nail my finisher move why not hit it from a higher height therefore it's going to be more effective I think if your finishing I move ain't a high flying move, then it's pointless bringing it No, I, I get that. Like, I totally get that. Like, a RVD or a Jeff Hardy bringing it a ladder, but. Like, Chris Jericho bringing it a ladder. Like, I know you can use a ladder as a weapon, but it's just, I don't know, Why would you like, use a ladder, not a steel chair? Like, huh? if, you're going to, if you're going to use a ladder, why would you not use a steel chair? Like, in terms of you're just going to hit them Yeah, it's a lot easier to swing with a steel chair, and. I don't know. But here, I'm not going to give the match a fucking one star because they used a ladder. It was good. Um, Stephanie McMahon got involved. RVD picked up the win. That's the only problem I've got with the match. Could Fan Dam not have won clean? I think, I think it would have did more for the match had Fan Dam won clean. I mean, it wasn't as if fucking Jericho got absolutely screwed. But he, he was distracted. And I don't know. I mean, some some matches I just don't think need screwy finishes. And I, don't, I think this is... What, I mean... I don't I think you can afford to I think you can lose a hardcore match and you don't come off as weak as you would lose in a singles match like if they're serious to fan down being pushed as the second best guy in the alliance which they are why does something fucking win I mean RVD just beat Jericho in that six man tag match clean I know so that's what it is but there you go guys that is the unforgiving um that's the match list, so we're in order from worst to best. Worst to best, we are going with the Bros of Destruction versus Chronic, Rhino versus Tajiri, Perry Sarton versus Raven. Four man tag match. Four, way, four man tag match. Christian oh, versus yes. Edge, Rock versus Booker T and Shane McMahon, Angle versus Austin, and the uh, match of the night we had uh, was RVD and Chris Jericho. 
Um, thoughts on the pay-per-view overall? Uh, I'd say it was better than SummerSlam. You would, I? What happened at SummerSlam? It was... I thought, I, I, personally, I thought SummerSlam was marginally... Because I, I thought the Austin Angle match at SummerSlam was I, better but, than but, anything on this. Yes, but I think Van Damme, Jericho was better, and Rock Booker T and Shane was much better than the match at SummerSlam. I think Edge Christian was better than Edge Land Storm. And I think... I'm not saying Taker and Thingy in, against Chronic was better than DDP and all, but I think DDP and Canyon get fucking royally screwed. Like, Yeah. I think Rhino Jericho was good at SummerSlam. I think SummerSlam's probably better, but the fact that SummerSlam and this was just Unforgiven... I would, yeah, that's why, I would, expected, give, that's why yeah. I would give that's why I would give unforgiven the 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 the, the L nudge. Yeah, I mean personally, I'm looking at SummerSlam. I, I thought most of the matches for SummerSlam were better. The Dudleys and Testa versus APA and Spike, I thought was better than the, oh, the four way match. Um, Jericho Rhino was decent. RVD Hardy was decent. I probably did prefer the Bros of Destruction Canyon Dallas match. Um, Angle Austin was better, but I, I probably didn't like the Rock Booker team match or something. I mean both pair of fuse were I think both pair of fuse were pretty good but unspectacular. I'd definitely say at this point the Raws are better. Like the the free TV's better. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the Because I know every week you're getting matches that you would get on the pay per view. Apart from like maybe Austin the title match you're not really getting, but Rock's defending the title every week. I know against Rhino, against Test, you against name the it. Dudleys. <laughs> the handicap table match. Anyway guys, that's it. Till next time. Let us know what you thought down below. Till then. Peace.